today's video is about how to sit the canter. I know many people struggle with the canter and with finding the correct position and the correct seat to absorb the motion of the horse's canter. So that's what we're talking about today. Let me know in the comments if you struggle with the canter. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out in the description, I have a free mini course on confidence. So if you're struggling with confidence, if you're struggling with the canter and getting up the confidence to do the canter, then you for sure want to try out that mini course. So in the canter, what we go through basically is that the canter is a three beat movement. So there's an upbeat, there's a flat beat, and there's a downbeat. So it's like a rocking horse and your seat and your hips have to follow and absorb that motion. So we're gonna dive into exactly what your spine and your hips need to be doing when you're in the saddle in order to absorb that motion. So give me a thumbs up if you're excited to learn how to sit the canter and I really hope you enjoy this video. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie. I am a doctor of physical therapy and I'm here today with Amelia and we are going to show you how to properly sit the canter. Um, so a lot of people that ride bounce out of the saddle in the canter. It can be a number of different things, but we're specifically going to talk today about the position of your spine in the canter. So a lot of people want to sit with their pelvis is tilted, what we call anteriorly. So that's where they sit too far and their pelvis is rotated this way. And what that does is it causes a rider to use too much of their back extensors here and not as much abdominals. Or riders want to sit with too much of a posterior pelvic tilt and they want to push too much and that would cause somebody to use the wrong abdominal muscles. So if you guys have watched our video that we did with the anatomy, they wanna use too much of the six pack and not enough transverse and oblique abdominals. And then it also will push them back behind the vertical. So here Amelia is sitting pretty straight and in neutral spine. So what neutral spine means is that you're sitting with the pelvis really square, both seat bones are pressing down straight down equally on both sides so normal neutral spine there is a little bit of lumbar what we call lordosis where there's a curvature this way and then a little bit of thoracic spine kyphosis but it's just a curvature this way this is our body's natural built-in mechanism for absorbing shock when anything is different in that position it does not allow your body to absorb that now as you go through the canter motion as Amelia is going to show, you have some movement in and out of neutral spine, but it's not exaggerated. It's just a little bit posterior, a little bit anterior, a little bit posterior, a little bit anterior, but always hovering right kind of around middle, which is in neutral spine. Yeah. And the reason for that is that the canter is a three beat gait. So there's an upbeat when the outside hind leg is on the ground, there's a flat beat and then there's a down beat. So the canter is like a rocking horse motion. And so your butt kind of has to swing from the back to the front of the saddle. So there is some motion in your hips, in your pelvis, in the canter, but it has to match exactly the canter stride. It can't be more and it can't be less. The other thing too, like what Amelia is just saying now is that if you are sitting, let's say, in an anterior pelvic tilt here, it locks out your ability to be able to follow that motion. So it actually kind of makes you just stuck in one position, just as if you were sitting with a posterior pelvic tilt, you're stuck in this position, and that does not allow you to follow that natural rocking horse motion that the horse is going to cause. So as Amelia goes, you'll see her pass through in and out of neutral spine and that is your base for riding the canter. So here you can see Amelia, she's sitting nice and neutral. So she's going into a little posterior, a little anterior, but always pretty much hovers within that neutral spine position. Now Amelia is showing how a rider is going to get popped out of the saddle 
and not be able to sit the canter well because they're riding in too much of an anterior pelvic tilt. So this is where they're tipped too far forward. You may feel the pubic bone. You may feel your back get tired and painful because you're using the back extensors too much. And then here, Amelia is going to sit in too much of a posterior pelvic tilt, which pushes her seat forward in front of the vertical and makes her upper body go behind the vertical. And you can kind of see her even collapse through her shoulders with this. And then she's going to go back to neutral spine. There's a little curve in her back. She's able to absorb the shock. Our body is naturally designed with a little bit of natural curvature in the low back and a little bit of opposite curvature in the thoracic spine, and that's how we absorb the shock the most.